So now 12 weeks have done. <laughs> and uh, with five weeks to go, the playoff picture is still looking rather stagnant. We're still waiting for potential division winners. <laughs> and yet, you know, you know, with this, these next five weeks, it could all be determined probably next week, probably by the end of the season, probably in January. So now what? Now everyone's been on this, on this brawl that had happened between Cortland Finnegan of the Tennessee Titans and Andre Johnson of the Houston Texans. And, uh, well, you saw the video, but if you have not, if you've been living under a rock, post the link right here for you to see. So now, but in my opinion, the fact that, you know, they've both been fined $25,000 and not suspended is a real crime on, on, this, on this part. Think about it. The NFL has been, has been cracking down on these, on these illegal hits, on these violations that have been going on. Yet, they decide to just fine Johnson and Finnegan. Which I don't get. Now, true and all that Andre Johnson has been declared one of the friendliest players of the NFL. I, I mean, if I wanted to discuss friendly, I would discuss, you know, like the legendary Reggie White and, uh, and Jerry Rice, if I want to put friendly in his part. But then on the other side, you have to look at Cortland Finnegan being declared the dirtiest player of the NFL. And he's been, he's been pretty much a hassler on... <laughs> on the defense, always, always stopping the gunners if they, if you, if it was on special teams, always disrupting receivers. He, in my opinion, if he plays dirty, why is he not suspended? And, and you know, I I, gra I grant the fact that that Andre Johnson was the only one who threw punches who. Pretty much take them, and you at the end when you see both players separated, Finnegan smiling like, "Ha, you're getting thrown out of the game." He got thrown out too, so, "Ha ha yourself." So now, how does it feel to be the punk of the NFL? Maybe I'm being a little harsh on these players, but come on, they're they're professionals, and they they have to know what to do in cases like these. Up the. Uh, Come on, man. And yes, granted that uh, our guy who, during week two, did the whole musket. And then last week, the whole shirt says, why so serious? This week, he probably needs to work on his sketch. I mean, I would label, I mean, if I would label to this week, uh, it would be labeled Butterfingers. For the come on man segment. Although I would like to add one more come on man to the segment. And it will go to Mississippi State's kicker Kyle Brossman for missing two short field goals. He missed one in order to clinch the game against Nevada, the Wolf Pack. But he missed it in regulation. And then he, there was another field goal in overtime in which he shanked it. Why? I mean. They were short field goals, and they are also dead center, which means they were makeable. They were pretty makeable, and the miss it would be just a travesty, and he missed twice. So do I feel shame for these guys? No, they, 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 you know, this is Boise State. This is a real hard football team. It was just miserable for Bratzman to miss those two field goals. And cost the Broncos the number three spot in the BCS rankings. Who, by the way, now is overrun by TCU. So now it's time for, guess what, my picks this week. Yeah, I know it's not a long week for me to actually discuss something. But probably because we are looking forward to the playoffs. I went 3-2 and two last week, so now it's on to uh, week 13. With a 33 and 27 record. Well, what do we have now? Although, to be honest, if I had chosen the Jets Bengals game on Thursday night for the third Thanksgiving game, I would have gone 4 and 1. <laughs> well, you can't win them all. Well, we start off with the AFC West as Matt Castle 
And the Chiefs host uh, <laughs> the Broncos into Arrowhead. And uh, we already seen what the Broncos have done uh, in a lacking position, but, well, it's not helping. Chiefs dominating 40-21. to Matt Castle, three touchdowns on the day. Then, switching from the AFC to the NFC, with the Seahawks from the West host the South Panthers. And really South, I should say. 1-10. and ten. And I, going to Westfield is not going to help. <laughs> uh, Hasselbeck getting two touchdowns on the day. It's going to be a 35-17 routing. Flipping back over to the AFC is a... <laughs> pretty interesting contest where the Browns, who have been pretty good, are taking on, well, who else? The Dolphins. And the Dolphins, who haven't been well at home, are still going to struggle a little bit. But it's going to be close, so I'm going to say it's 1916 Cleveland. And I know it's monotonous, but uh, going right back over from the AFC to NFC. Uh, NFC East this time, where Donovan McNabb and the Redskins go over to New Giant Stadium to take on Eli Manning and the G-Men, and uh, <laughs> I'm it's going to be uh, two touchdowns each for Manning and McNabb, but uh, it'll be the running game as the Redskins upset the Giants thirty to twenty-eight. And finally, we go right back to the AFC. And the, well, we're staying with the East, so no need to travel that far. My primetime special is the Patriots and the Jets on Monday night, and it's a thriller. This one, I mean, you can watch the th- you can watch the event if you want. You can watch, but you're gonna miss out on this spectacle battle between the Patriots and the Jets. And <laughs> wow. All I can say is it's going to be close, but Tom Brady will outwit Mark Sanchez and uh, well, win 37-31. Deion Branch is going to be a big help. So here are my picks for this week. We have the Chiefs, the Seahawks, the Browns, my upset special, the Redskins, and my primetime special, the Patriots. Okay, so here's a look at week 13 for you guys to vote on. The game is to vote for, uh, for week 14. Three more weeks with the uh, <laughs> uh, primetime s- specials. So it all starts off in Tennessee. And, well, we're going to see Cortland Finnegan, the dirtiest player, play against the Colts in LP Field on Thursday night on the NFL Network. Then it's an NFC East battle. Why are so many NFC East uh Matchups getting so much attention. Well, anyway, the Eagles go over to New Cowboys Stadium to take on a what was supposed to be a rejuvenated Dallas Cowboy team. But can Michael Vick actually expose the truth to the New Cowboys, or are we just seeing a re- a renewal with uh, Jason Garrett? Finally, the Monday Night game features Andre Johnson. Hosting uh, Baltimore Ravens. So Joe Flacco. <laughs> well, I'm ho- we're hoping not going to see any more of that from Andre Johnson. Knowing how nice he is. But uh, Ravens, Texans to finish it off. Well. Juice! What's what he want? And that's going to do it. We are in December and the playoff race is on. See you then.